Strength training for women. The first thing we need to understand is in any type of training, for, for people to get fitter or to get stronger, is we have to work by a principle of training, right? And just, just before I come to that, right? Strength training, women generally, right? It's changing more over the last number of years, but there's still a lot of women out there who feel that they don't want to do strength training because they don't want to get bulky and they feel that um, doing a lot of weights is going to bulk them up and make them look like these one of these veiny type of bodybuilders. Now, the reality is the in particular won't end up looking like that. They don't produce the hormones in the body like testosterone to, to get that size. And for those women that are out there that have those massive muscles and veins and things, either eating very well, either supplementing very, very well, or getting a little bit of extra help as well. So <clears throat> just be just be conscious of that, that naturally that's not what will happen for women. Most likely what will happen is you'll, you'll shift back, you'll get toned, you'll get strong. And that's what a lot of... Um, people aim for right and that's what you should be aiming for is that kind of just definition and and strength so strength is a good thing and something you need to do right but in order to get stronger and to get fitter you have to work by a principle of what's called overload right and overload basically means that we say for example these are three kg dumbbells here right that leak sand so i'm going to watch they don't fall on the floor so, so these example you were doing you were just doing bicep curls with these three kgs for six weeks. If you keep going at that program for 12 weeks, 20 weeks, for two years, your body won't develop. It won't keep getting stronger. So what happens is you just plateau. So this principle of overload means you have to be constantly overloading the body to the point where you're doing that little bit extra each time, that the body has to work. And once you do that, the body will develop. It's, it's like anything. If all you're doing is walking, walking only gets you so far, then you need to start running. Then you might need to start sprinting. Or then you might just need to start going up inclines. All these little things are just signs that you're getting fitter. But that's the principle we have to work by. Okay, So that's the very first thing. We can't stay at the same program for too long. Four, six weeks, developing it over those four to six weeks, and then open it again after that. Okay. The second thing then, um, obviously with strength like for, for for everybody we lose 10 percent of our muscle mass once we cross 30 years of age we lose 10 percent every decade so by the time you're 70 years of age you've lost 40 percent of your muscle mass so we have to try and maintain that as much as we can be as strong as we can the older we get the harder it's going to be just age takes over but particularly if you wait now till your 50s and you haven't done anything about strength training you've already lost 20-30% of your muscle mass at this stage so we need to try and build that back up and particularly again for women because you know they wouldn't have the same lean muscle that men would have just from genetics it means that they're struggling against it and this is why you know sometimes men might have see quicker results is because their metabolism is naturally higher because they've, they have an ability to carry more lean muscle all right so <clears throat> that's that's why it's super important particularly for women like because men produce more more of the hormones and they carry more lean muscle naturally, it's easier for them to get stronger. For women, it's more difficult. They don't have the hormones. They're already losing muscle mass as they get older, so they need to work that bit harder. So now, whatever stage you're at, it's never too late to start. Okay. So <clears throat> because of that, and because we see a lot of mothers in particular, um, they sacrifice themselves and their lives to look after their kids. So they're working, they're looking after the kids, they're looking after partners, they're so busy. And it, you know, it's a very common thing that we'd see. So because they haven't taken the time to build themselves up and be strong over the course of their, their lives, by the time they hit their mid-40s or 50s, they're carrying more injuries. So building strength will help prevent some of those injuries and prevent, I suppose, help the, the symptoms of current injuries that you have. And how they do that, a lot of, a, lot of, a common thing that a lot of, people, not just women, would find as they get older is arthritis. Just wear and tear on the joints and the knees. The more lean muscle, the more strength training you do and you can put on more lean muscle around your joints, the more pressure it takes off those joints. Okay, So if you can imagine you've got two bones meeting on themselves, in and around the bone is muscle. If we can build up the strength of that muscle and those tendons, it takes the pressure off. 
those joints, which means you don't have as much issues, you don't have as much, now you'll still have some, I'm not saying this is the, the cure for everything, but it relieves the symptoms that you can have a better quality of life, that's ultimately what it's about, okay? So that's the second thing. So first is we have to be overloading the body as much as we can, and that's why like strength training is defined as kind of an external force that you're applying on the body. Like if I just use and I'm just lifting like this, that's not going to be enough in time. For some people it might. Remember we're talking about isolation, um, time under tension, contractions there in some of our workouts. But when you apply an external force, now the muscles have to work harder. So we're overloading the natural ability of the muscles, which means you get stronger by doing that. Okay. The third thing then, particularly for women, right, is pregnancy. So pregnancy ac actually offers a great opportunity for people, obviously, have a family, not, not that side of it, but there, there's a couple of things that, that, that happen, right? So uh, for, for those who uh, you know, or be it yourself, or be it your, your parents, or whatever, have had C-sections, right? What happens, for those of you who don't know, they cut down through the abdominal wall, take the baby out, sew it back up. Now they say after three, maybe four C-sections, that the muscles will never recover fully in the stomach. So it's important that whether you're planning a family or you've had it, that you be trying to build this, the, the strength of the core as much as you can. And again, you do that by strength training. Obviously some core work will help, like um, planks and all that kind of stuff, but good body weight exercises as well that require core stability will, will be super important. So that's the first thing. The second thing is after pregnancy is an ideal time to shift weight. If you can imagine, right, the body is adapting to feed for another human. So the, the capillaries, the blood vessels, everything has expanded to allow that extra blood flow and those extra nutrients to, to go to your, your, your child. So straight away after pregnancy, within a couple of weeks, is an ideal opportunity for you to shift weight. Because the blood vessels are expanded, it means there's more blood flow, which means that we can circulate the fat out of the system quicker. It can deliver more oxygen to the working muscles and the working muscles and strength training needs that oxygen and needs that energy and needs that nutrients. So it's an ideal time to get back in shape as quick as you can after pregnancy and not let it go for months at a time. All right. Um, so then, <clears throat> Yeah, and look, a, a common thing obviously with per parenthood in general would be, again, if you've had kind of years of neglect front of it or of yourself, then what happens is you just pick up lower back, lower back in injuries, stiffness, tightness, wear and tear is probably the one, one of the most common things that people will, will have a, a gripe about in terms of just injuries and stuff. And the biggest thing is that a lot of that comes from not looking after yourself but when you have kids and you're pick, like <clears throat> as much as we'd like to think that we're going to deadlift and pick up the kids and all of that kind of thing most people don't do you know they, they bend over with poor technique round out their back and they're lifting like this for what, 10 years each child you know, four kids with 40 years of combined lifting so you know a lot of that just puts wear and tear on your back so particularly and that's what we see now with you know, mid 40s, 50s, a lot of us see particularly mothers coming in and we need to work on that strength. Okay, so strength is super important for that side of it as well, just for again, daily living and those kind of things. All right. Um, so look, obviously the, the other big thing when we're talking, ta talking of injuries and conditions and things is osteoporosis, right? Which, which really affects women more than men. I'm not saying it doesn't affect men at all, but it, it, it's, it's a condition that affects um, women more so. They have studies that show um, increased strength training leads to a prevention of bone loss to some degree, but it also increases your bone density. Now really, how it would do that is like where tendons in the body is what joins muscle to bone. If you can make those muscles stronger, make those tendons stronger, puts more pressure on the bone, which means the bones have to build to anchor those tendons down, right? That's the first part. The second part then is impact work. So if you, I, I've done videos on this before, but impact work it, combined with your strength training. So impact work is basically like if you were stepping up and down off something where your foot has to land on the ground, that impact is what causes bone density. So like boxing, anything like that, if you were punching something, it builds up bone density in your wrist. All right. So super important strength training for anyone who might have, and we're seeing a lot more of it, osteopenia is the precursor 
to osteoporosis. You can stop osteoporosis in its tracks if you have osteopenia, but now is the time to do your strength training. And obviously then the, the other side of it is when you have osteoporosis, the fear is that if you fall and you break something, the recovery could be months instead of weeks. So again, the more lean muscle you have, the more you'll protect those joints from falling. Okay, so it's just, you know, to, to keep all, all those things in mind. And the very last thing then as well, guys, is just general, just general shape, fat loss, just general um, conditioning. The more lean muscle you have, the more calories you're going to burn. So I did a video on this just during the week in terms of um, common mistakes, the five common mistakes that people would make. And one was focusing more on cardio than strength. So the more, the more lean muscle you have, the, more, the stronger you can be, the more calories you're going to burn. And that's what this is all about. If you see all the other videos I talk about, it's about controlling the calories. So if we can burn more calories, it means we're going to shift fat quicker. And it means we don't have to be as strict on our diets if we can burn more calories because we'll, we'll be able to have that alone. So we need to get our metabolism up. And by doing that, we need to be carrying more lean muscle. And that lean muscle is, is what's called thermogenic. So it actively burns calories. So to, to get it requires a lot of calories and to keep it requires a lot of calories. So that's what everyone needs to be focused on. Not just ca cardio isn't enough. Strength training is a huge part. Whole body strength training is a huge part of getting in shape and staying in shape. Okay, so look, there are the five key things. I hope they made sense.